Gays and lesbians are your co-workers, business owners, neighbors, parents, children. We are everywhere. We walk alongside our heterosexual counterparts down every path in life in all corners of the world. Welcome to Forward and Out. I'm your host, Eileen Karn. This show addresses the issues and concerns of the lesbian and gay community and will show that everywhere includes the suburbs and the rural areas. In fact, the face of the lesbian and gay community is often not recognized outside of large cities, and isolation can often pervade the lives of non-urban gay men and women. Yet, like any minority, connecting with others within their own community is vital. In this edition of Forward and Out, we introduce you to The Loft, a lesbian and gay community services center located in the city of White Plains, New York. With us are The Loft's co-presidents, Dr. Zell Andrews and Lester Goldstein. Welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thank you. Lester, let's start with you. You were involved in the early years of The Loft. Can you tell us about its mission, its purpose, and how it's helped the gay community? Well, The Loft has uh, uh, been in existence now for 10 years. Uh, it started, I think, as a loose association of other lesbian and gay organizations that found that they needed to have a safe space mm -hmm. uh, for people to congregate uh, for communal purposes. Um, those groups included the, the Lesbian Task Force of Westchester, the Gay Men's Alliance of the Hudson Valley, uh, the Gay Fathers of Westchester, and Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gays. Mm -hmm. So your involvement as co-president really represents an evolution of women's involvement in the loft. Can you talk about that? Well, I'm not the first co-president, but uh, the evolution is certainly there. Um, the uh, loft has had a history of, uh, of, of uh, participation by women, but not as actively as it does now, and we are making a special effort in every part of our activities uh, to make sure that we're gender balanced. That's why Lester and I are co-presidents. Um, our committees uh, are uh, gender balanced. We make sure that uh, uh, every effort is made to uh, bring the uh, lesbians and gay men together uh, in common goals. Mm -hmm. The um, lesbian task force that uh, uh, Lester mentioned came out of the National Organization for Women, which uh, began uh, in this um, county back in the early 1970s. The lesbian task force has been closely associated uh, with NOW, and uh, the lesbian movement, uh, in terms of its national uh, growth, um, has been very much a product of the feminist uh, re uh, revolution of which now has been uh, a leader for many years. Mm -hmm. So it was the coming together for women of uh, that feminist experience and that lesbian uh, awareness that has now begun to move towards these joint efforts uh, mm -hmm. that bring both lesbians and gay men together in mm -hmm. a, a space that we call the law. Mm -hmm. A common cause recognized. Indeed. What are the uh, programs and services that the, uh, the LOFT offers? Well, the, the, the LOFT offers uh, var various services. The first and foremost, I think, uh, is, as I mentioned before, is a safe space. Um, we live in a heterosexual society or a heterosexist society. Uh, homophobia uh, continues uh, in all facets. We all grow up being trained to be heterosexual. Um, the loft is the safe space. It's the place for solace, it's for comfort, uh, it's for information, and the programs reflect that. Um, the peer support services, um, which run the men's and women's rap group and other focused uh, uh, types of, of discussion groups, uh, the gay and lesbian helpline, um, which is a seven day a week service, and, and that in fact the service has been here even long before the loft. I, I believe that uh, we are now in 25 years of uh, providing telephone service in the community. Um, and the, uh, our community newsletter, which I think helps to bring all of the groups uh, together and informed on each other's activities. Uh, this is, uh, I, I think, a re the, the growth of, of the, and the, the blossoming of all of these activities at the loft reflect a change in gay and lesbian uh, culture. Um, when you go back to the 1950s, uh, it was required, culturally required, to be secretive, mm -hmm. uh, to be closeted. Um, the imperative now for gay and lesbian people is to come out. The realization is that civil rights 
will not be obtained in the closet, mm -hmm. and that visibility is very important. Mm -hmm. How do you handle um, the confidentiality in that sense when people are involved with the loft? Do you want to address that, Sal? Well, one of the ways that we do that when we're in a rap session, for example, uh, the first thing that a facilitator will say is, everybody here needs to understand that who they see here and what gets said here is confidential. Leaving this room, you do not repeat what you've heard, and you do not comment on who has been in attendance with you. Mm -hmm. And it's a, uh, it's a code of honor uh, that has been part of our um, experience of getting together and um, being a part of, uh, of these kinds of exchanges which have helped us mm -hmm. deal with the issues of coming out and the struggles that we have. It has given us a sense of trust in each other um, mm -hmm. that we can um, count on each other uh, to be supportive within our community without exposing us to the dangers that are out there of exposure. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Many of us know what those dangers mm -hmm. are. They have to do with the potential loss of your job, your family bonds uh, for parents, the loss of their children, the loss of your home. They are serious civil rights issues for us that can mm -hmm. be compromised mm -hmm. if a, a, a gay or lesbian person um, is exposed in a way that uh, is, is not safe. Mm -hmm. The loft makes it safe uh, for us. Mm -hmm. there are many people that I meet at the loft, at a loft activity, uh, and then later on might meet them um, in a public place uh, here in White Plains where I don't expect to be recognized or acknowledged mm -hmm. uh, in terms of my role at the community center. I might be introduced for the first time deliberately. Mm -hmm. um, th that's a, you know, it's sort of the schizophrenic um, uh, identity that our organization has to have. We protect the privacy of our members, but at the same time, we provide them with the pride and recognition of culture by being a very visible organization in the community. Right. That visibility um, includes um, education around political issues, doesn't it? Can you talk a little bit about that, the uh, education of members for uh, candidates in local elections and things like that? We were about to have uh, uh, a candidate's night, uh, which uh, all of our members will be invited uh, to, and a number of political candidates for uh, county uh, offices and judicial uh, positions will have been invited um, and many of them usually show up. It's an opportunity to educate our community about uh, the candidates themselves and about their positions on various issues. Um, we have a number of very serious political issues that we want to ask them questions about. Um, we want to ask them, uh, for example, what their position uh, is on uh, uh, gay rights legislation at the state level. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Even as a county uh, official. They have connections with state officials that can be supportive of us, of us or damaging to us. Mm -hmm. And we would like to know whether or not they're going to be supportive of this very basic legislation having to do with our civil rights. There are other matters that have to do with domestic partnerships, which they uh, may indeed have some influence on. Certainly judges of the family court have a tremendous influence on custody decisions. Um, there are many instances, and we know there's some well-known cases now uh, nationally, where uh, gays and lesbians have either lost custody of their children or through court decisions um, been able to hold on to their custody. Mm -hmm. So these are serious issues um, that are very close to our lives, and we want to make sure that uh, the people that we are helping uh, elect to office um, and whose positions we support with our taxes <laughs> care about us and right. our, our concerns. Right. I think the information sharing function um, in, in, is, is also politicizing of people. Um, the, 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 the coming out to the community, the joining in communal events is very different. Uh, again, you know, when we go back to the pre-Stonewall era, the mm. 1950s, um, where you, you did not do anything uh, that would show your interest in anything gay or lesbian outside of the meeting. Now we have people focusing on all sorts of issues in the community, on biased crimes, mm -hmm. um, on, on, le on legislation, um, on, on diversity uh, curriculum, on funding for AIDS, and people come to the loft to get information what is going on in New York City, what's going on in Albany, what's going on in Rockland. Uh, and there's an enormous exchange of information, which in and of itself I believe is very politicizing. Mm -hmm. 
I'd like to mention one thing uh, sure. as well. We have fun. This is the gay 90s, folks. <laughs> right. And uh, one of my first exposures to uh, the uh, lesbian and gay world was uh, the dances. Mm -hmm. um, and that tradition continues. We mm -hmm. have a lot of fun um, mm -hmm. at dances and our gay pride parades. Um, we uh, have a, um, a, a literature, literary guild starting at the loft. We have an artist's group. Um, we have uh, a number of activities, karate, volleyball, mm -hmm. whatever interests people have. As bowling leagues. Bowling leagues. <laughs> I Don't shouldn't forget, forget the bowling league that's been very supportive of us. It's an opportunity to, for us to um, have fun mm -hmm. with each other right. yeah. comfortably um, uh, without the hassle that mm -hmm. it takes us always to negotiate uh, in a heterosexist world. So um, come, join us, have fun. Yeah, right. I, I want to say how important those social activities are. It is not just, it is having fun and it is socializing, but it can't be done anywhere else. Mm. At least not in an alcohol and drug free environment. Right. Uh, which is what the loft is providing as opposed to the traditional gay bar scene. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we need to recognize that one third of our community is involved in the abuse of some substance. Mm. Uh, and I think part of the reason for that is in, in the old days, the only place that they could go to feel safe were places where these substances were really available. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're a healthy alternative to that. Right. I think too that that is a natural outcome of being a person in a society that treats you very badly. Right. Um, if you uh, do not uh, have some pride in your mm -hmm. own um, very being, uh, if people around you treat you as if you are uh, unacceptable, if your family throws you out of the house, um, if uh, you have all of this social opprobrium around mm -hmm. you, it is not unusual that you should seek solace right. of some kind. Yeah. Um, and I think all of us recognize that, uh, that something like the loft um, is the sort of place that a community like ours, which has been so cruelly oppressed, um, has to come together and, mm -hmm. uh, and socialize in ways mm -hmm. that, are, that are healthier for all of us. Yeah. We don't have to be. Um, so isolated and so mm -hmm. uh, distraught or um, distressed that we have to mm -hmm. turn to substances to just to exist in the world. Right. It's possible to find each other and uh, and have that support. Sense of community. Sense of community. The oppression uh, has really tragic consequences for uh, the teens. It does indeed. Can, and the Loft has a teen group, is that right? A, we have our, our, our uh, Open Doors for Youth program um, for youngsters age 16 to 21. I know they're insulted when they're called youngsters, <laughs> adolescents and young adults, 16 to 21. Um, it's a very diverse group, men and women, um, and um, they are a, an interesting phenomenon. They could not have existed even 10 years ago. Um, and I think that's a reflection of change in our society that people are coming out at a younger age. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a wonderful honesty and, and self-recognition and self-esteem mm -hmm. is a wonderful alternative to suicide and drugs and mm -hmm. depression. Yes. And I think it should be mentioned what a tremendous support the organization called PFLAG, Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gay, uh, makes to that kind of uh, youth activity. Without the support of parents and friends, um, young people cannot be as secure mm -hmm. about talking um, to their parents and to their uh, relatives about who they are and why they are this way. I think probably one of the healthiest and most supportive groups that are in existence today are PFLAG. And the, the parents um, who are part of that have been extremely courageous, extremely supportive, and have made all the difference in the world to the young people whom they've been able to uh, to support. Right, yeah, PFLAG is uh, Parents and Friends of Lesbians and Gays. Yes. And one of the other groups that meets at the Loft. Yes. Right. Uh, where are things headed for the Loft? Where, Where is it going to be in well, the year loft has, The Loft has, has, has fortunately, I think, outgrown um, its rented facilities and is looking for larger quarters. Um, so if uh, you've got a, a suitable building, um, <laughs> Uh, give us a call and we'll get the number <laughs> later in the show. Charitable contributions uh, of buildings I, I, and other things are welcome. The explosion of activity, the number of, of people organizing new groups and new activities, um, you know, either on an ad hoc basis or hopefully on a permanent basis, um, uh, the lesbian couples group, 
uh, the, the lesbian and gay social evening that's starting, the Shabbat group for Jewish gays and lesbians, um, the gay African Americans, um, the Loft Kids, the, the the children's group. That's right, the gays and lesbians with children. Uh, uh. The, it's actually a children's group, the Loft Kids, mm -hmm. um, and the continuing the gay fathers uh, group. There's so many interests and activities, and you really, when you come into the Loft, you come into an explosion of culture. Mm -hmm. You know, of, of a sense of community and a sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, what about membership in the Loft then? Um, how does that work, and is the loft structured as a membership organization where it's run by its members? It, it is a, a membership organization. We do have dues that are twenty-five dollars a year, um, and you can become a, a benefactor if you like for a thousand dollars a year. But um, most people join at the twenty-five dollar level. We have a, a household uh, a, a membership of forty dollars uh, for people who are in relationships, uh, and I think that's important to recognize that we do have relationships and it's a way of of uh, giving recognition to those re uh, relationships that no one else in society seems mm -hmm. to be willing to do. Um, we have an active working volunteer board of directors mm -hmm. so uh, that the membership is um, an, a good way to get involved. Um, we have our monthly board meetings on the first Thursday of every month and, and I'd like to say that membership in the loft uh, is not just for lesbians, gays, and bisexuals. It's for anyone who believes in the concept of a community center and the purpose of the loft. Mm -hmm. the civil we also want to mention the uh, monthly newsletter, our community news, um, which uh, makes it possible for people who uh, are members to find out all kinds of information about mm -hmm. our events and activities and our, our calendar is full. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so the, the news is a vital link between all right. of us. What has uh, been the response uh, in the community to the loft? Have you had a sense of that, how other, uh, I guess, other groups and then, you know, even heterosexual or conventional institutional groups respond? I can remember from uh, three years ago that uh, there were times that uh, we got some really bad press. Um, and again, I, I think as a result of that, people organized around an issue uh, and I think that in recent years, our relationship with the, uh, the media in the Westchester Rockland area is, is greatly improved. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to the point where some people are saying, this is great coverage. Mm -hmm. People from other communities, how did you get the newspapers to say this? Mm -hmm. And I think we're becoming more professional, although we're all volunteers, more professional in using press releases uh, and in networking with people in the media. Um, this show is a good example of that, mm -hmm. um, of reaching out and showing who we really are and trying to defeat the stereotypical definitions that have been applied to us in the past. Mm -hmm. I think that also it's part of the evolution of all kinds of civil rights efforts. Um, African Americans always had um, Caucasian supporters. Feminists always had a number of men in their ranks. Mm -hmm. um, gay and lesbians have heterosexual friends and supporters, and PFLAG is one example. There are always people who are able to understand basic issues of civil rights mm -hmm. um, and have a bedrock commitment to civil rights for all people. So as we, ex as we uh, emphasize those issues and make clear that we are a group of people that has not received a fair shake. There are always fair-minded people who are, uh, who are not gay mm -hmm. and lesbian, who are just as strong supporters of us uh, as we are ourselves, because it, they're basic matters of, of being an American citizen, uh, which means that we all have the basic rights to, to, to certain mm -hmm. uh, um, privileges and uh, responsibilities in the society, which we mm -hmm. as citizens all um, yeah. have the right to. Yeah. Either of you have a sense about the uh, progress of the gay rights bill in Albany? I Either. think that it came very close to passing in this last term, had it not been for uh, uh, the failure of the uh, Senate leadership in the, the um, Senate, uh, we would have had our gay uh, uh, rights bill. Um, we are not going to give up. Um, mm -hmm. We have made clear that, um, that it is not acceptable for a small caucus of uh, Republican senators to prevent this issue from coming to the floor of the state legislature and being heard and voted on. Mm -hmm. If it had been, it would have been voted on successfully. So we'll be there again next year, and we'll have the pressure on them again. And uh, we will have this bill, just as every other group uh, has managed to uh, um, 
la outlast the bigots mm -hmm. uh, and the fearful mm -hmm. and the op uh, opposers. Uh, it's a matter of time, and we hope that uh, the Senate understands uh, that it's important to be on the r on the winning side of civil mm -hmm. rights issues. So right. next year we'll be back. Great. Is the loft working with other uh, groups for this? Is it sort of coordinated effort among uh, various gay groups throughout the state? The um, Empire State Pride Agenda um, is an association of what used to be smaller lobbying groups uh, in New York State. Uh, and they are coordinating the statewide effort to pass not only the Gay and Lesbian Civil Rights Bill, uh, but the agenda, and mm -hmm. uh, it's a good reason to call it the Pride Agenda, uh, includes domestic partnership legislation uh, and the bias-related crimes legislation. I think we have to be very proud, even though the bills have not passed, that we're getting excellent signs of support from our local legislators mm -hmm. uh, here in Westchester uh, and in Putnam. Mm -hmm. um, there are other areas that um, need to do a lot, a lot more work, uh, and we're going to continue to remain vigilant here. Um, the Pride Agenda um, is, is coordinating this effort um, by participating in grassroots organizing. So they, may, they will come to our center because they know they can find the community through mm -hmm. our center. Right. I think it's important to acknowledge, too, that we've had the support of the current uh, county administration in Westchester with the appointment of a county liaison to the gay and lesb lesbian community. Uh, her name is Norma Crone. Um, she makes it possible for us to um, uh, work uh, with the county uh, on issues of concern to us, and I think it represents a tremendous uh, um, uh, advantage mm -hmm. for uh, the, the gay and lesbian community in Westchester mm -hmm. to have an administration here that recognizes us and supports us mm -hmm. with a liaison, an mm -hmm. official liaison to our community, right. and they deserve credit for that mm -hmm. appointment. Right. Is the liaison be able to specifically troubleshoot on individual matters, or is it more uh, uh, a general? Uh, Norma Crone, uh, who is the liaison, has, uh, has certainly done a lot of constituent work, uh, particularly in the area of housing discrimination, where there is uh, protection under the law. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, there are many areas where there isn't protection under the law at the present mm -hmm. time. Um, it is legal to fire somebody because they're gay, although people are not usually that tacky. They say it's for mm -hmm. another reason. Mm -hmm. uh, there isn't much she can do about it, uh, but the influence of the office, you know, the air of, 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 of being official uh, and that, and that the, the county government is interested when these things happen, we hope will at least decrease their incidence mm -hmm. uh, in the county. And we hope that the county executive, um, as other county executives in New York State ha have done, uh, will at least for county employees and county services issue an executive order eliminating discrimination. Right. Much as has been done in New York City and, and other places. What about the name The Loft? It's because it's a place, right? Is it was a loft. Uh -huh. looked like a loft. Still looks like a loft in some respects. It's a large room that enables us to congregate uh, in, in sizable groups. Um, it is also um, a reasonably safe title. There mm -hmm. are still people who are not out of the closet. They can't be for whatever reasons are pertinent to their personal lives. Um, but we have to protect that privacy. Mm -hmm. right. We still have to make sure, for example, that when we send out a mailing, um, it, it's in a brown, brown paper bag. <laughs> right. um, we still have to, when we uh, receive uh, contributions, to endorse a check with a rubber stamp that says only the loft, so that we can make sure that those people mm -hmm. for whom uh, exposure is, right. is still intolerable um, will not be exposed. Right. It is possible for, lesbi uh, for, for lesbian and gays uh, at various levels to be open, some, many, many of them are not. Lester and I have reached a point where we're here at a mm -hmm. level of exposure that many other lesbian and gay people could not accept. Right. So right. we have to maintain this treacherous balance all the time between mm -hmm. just how far out um, we expose ourselves and other people to right. and how f much we must respect right. the privacy of others. And so we're careful about right. how we represent ourselves. And, well, the um, loft's a good name then. A uh, safe yes. place uh, to have fun, uh, to socialize. Yes. To, to plug in with the community. To find each other. To find each other in the sense of community. We hope our show has shed some light on interesting issues. Your questions and comments are important to us, so let us know your views. Please write to Forward and Out, 
Care of the Loft, P.O. Box 1513, White Plains, New York, 10602. Or call the Loft's helpline, 914-948-4922. The volunteers at the helpline can also answer your questions about becoming a member of the Loft. Staying connected with your gay and lesbian community is one important benefit of membership. There are many events, groups, and services offered. Your membership also supports the Loft's efforts to keep the voice of the lesbian and gay community strong, including sponsorship of this show. Please get involved, stay involved, and become a member of the Loft. Stay tuned directly following the closing credits for the Loft's Community Bulletin Board, listing information which will be of interest to you. Thanks for watching Forward and Out. We hope you'll tune in to our upcoming shows. Till next time, be proud.